Good afternoon, and welcome to my daily chat, my daily Facebook Live, that also goes onto YouTube and podcast. I'll get to that later. This is episode 468, and the topic today um, <laughs> is very much on my mind right now, which is, are you dating a fraud? How do you know, and what to do about it? And I'll get into that in much more detail shortly. Before I get to that, though, let me start by introducing myself and let you know what this is about as a context, and then we'll get to the topic. So my name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't really figured that out, because that's on my um, page you're watching this on, as well as on my channel when you watch it there. And I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help my my clients, which are mostly strong, successful women, find and maintain balance in life, love, and life, love, and business. Life, love, and business. Double checking get that right. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which drives my work and my support of women in general. In general, <laughs> there's something on my mind, so I'm be careful about this. So, I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart because, and so is the feminine. And so, it's today's topic, and this is again number 468, episode 468 after a year and a half's worth of talks. Is I dating a fraud? How do you know what to do about it? Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm toying with the idea of explaining the reason why I'm talking about fraud. I may get into that, we'll see. But let me just talk about, talk about the relationship-centric terms first, because then it's more general help versus me venting, because there's a temptation to vent right now. Um, sorry, I'm just seeing three different things happen at once. Okay, one of these I want to talk about first of all, which is the more dire one, which is if you've ever dated a narcissist, you know what it's like to date a fraud. Because a narcissist is someone who basically portrays themselves a certain way until they get you hooked in, and then they change completely. And that's that's a, that's basically a pretty clear definition of what a fraud is, to be do, just totally transparent. That's one. Secondly, though, there's a subtle level where, now you may have done this yourself, to be honest, where you presented yourself a certain way and a certain persona, and you dressed up a certain way to look a certain part, that impressed your future mate but then once you get into a relationship all that stuff goes out the window and you're sitting there in your sweats in your sweats you know eating potato chips on out of a bowl on your, on your belly and you're being totally you know oblivious you know what i mean that that picture so i think we all carry that certain level of fraudulent behavior where we present ourselves a certain way that is perf- picture perfect and not a word out of place not a hair out of place not a, mo- not a movement out of place but a few months into the relationship, we don't give a flying F what's going on, and we just be natural. That's that's two extremes, in a sense. Because the narcissist is extremely... It's, it's a, a, a intentional, malevolent... Malevolent? Is that the right word? Mal- malevolent and malicious way of being in a relationship because they're taking things from you, energetically, emotionally, mentally. On the other side of things, some people are concerned that we won't be liked being natural, so we're always putting on a pretense, a look, an appearance, which is a form of fraud as well, because it's lying about who we are, in a sense. Let me, let me rewind that one a second. I want to, of course, correct that one. The fraudulent part is that we don't always dress up and act that way all the time. If you're someone who's always dressed to the nines, always presenting yourself a, yourself a certain way, always having the right words, the right things, the right sayings, even when you're in bed, then you're aligned to that, and that's not a fraud, that's not fortunate. But if it's like most of us, we have a spectrum or a scale of which we appear to be presenting ourselves, and then we get to be natural at certain points. Sometimes that's a, that's a massive extreme or a massive range. You might want to do something about that too. So I'll get to that as well. Sorry, this, this, this thing's on my mind, so I think I, I need to talk about it. Now I'm, going to do it. I'm going to do it as anonymously as I can because I don't want, well... This, this ties to business, um, the experience I'm dealing with. So I'm going to share that first, and then I'll see if I can bring it back into the area of relationship so you can help me in the area too. It's very, well, let me, no, actually, no, 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 okay. <laughs> My mind is going around in circles right now, so excuse me for not being clear and sharp and to a point, but I think I've got a picture now of what I want to say. I'm going to use a business model first to explain how fraud really is painful and then see how you can put it into a relationship because it's even more painful there sometimes because it's emotionally weighted. So, business dealings that are fraudulent 
are where someone basically promises something they don't deliver with no intention of delivering it. Let me, put it, let, me, let me frame it this way, sorry. When someone promises something they don't deliver it, but they did it because they, they didn't deliver because they couldn't, or they're unable to for some reason, it's one thing. But when they promise to deliver something and they won't because they don't intend to, that's fraudulent. And in business, that happens quite a lot, unfortunately. It happens also politically, unfortunately. And I'm not getting into that right now. But there's definitely, you see, you see out in the news and in the media things where people were, um, didn't deliver what they promised. And fraud basically is being, being um, pervaded, portrayed, presented because it's coming from a place that is um, known ahead of time to not be, not, not going to work. It's like basically someone who is being um, fraudulent is someone who's like committing, saying, I'm going to get this done, no problem. Sorry, I bumped the camera. But I know I'm not going to do it. I'm being very vague again, but that's because I have to do it that way right now. Right, right, that way for now. But let me bring it back to relationships. This is the context I want to bring it into, which is this. For most of us, we are looking for partnership that is honest and in, in integrity. So I hope you are. If you're watching my broadcast, I hope you are. And the dance that we have in a relationship is one where we hope the other person we're dealing with is honest, is trustable, is in integrity, means what they say, backs up what they say with what they do, is on alignment, all these different things. Now, on your first date, maybe you do, and maybe they also do, overdo the presentation to look even more attractive, and maybe relax it back, maybe relax it back a bit when they're in a relationship. So, to rework what I said at the beginning, there's definitely a sense of overdoing the appearance to be something you're not quite that. That's not quite the same as fraud. Fraud is where basically it's a totally different look, where you're putting on a mask or a presentation that's not who you are. Now, in some ways that could be looked at as being acting or as being a, um, I'll put it another way, playing a character. That's fine to a degree. However, if the connection, if the intention, if the behavior is one that is meant to manipulate, confuse, control, lie to, then it is more in the area of fraud. You know, if you're an actor and who's living in LA as so many other people who are, who's putting on a role for a movie, that's not fraud, obviously. That's actually acting, you know, duh. But in real life, acting can have different flavors. So in your relationship choices, you may be finding yourself in a place where you're not sure if you can be authentic or not. Here's a hint. <laughs> be authentic is the best thing you can do. Because first of all, if you're being authentic and true to yourself and being able to express who you are naturally, then you don't have to worry about remembering what you said or didn't say. Because the problem with being in a place where you're lying to people or fraudulent to people, you've got to keep a story going that isn't the truth. So now you're doing two things at once. You know what the truth is, and you're being fraudulent at the same time. And that's really messy, because trying to do that makes it really hard to do. Um, but some people are good at it. And that's one of the things that I'm noticing is really frustrating to me. And this is go back to the dealing I'm having in business. Um, I'm part of a group that's been putting together a book. Okay, I'm going to talk about it. I'm part of a group of people putting together a book, a um, bunch of authors. And the, peop the, the person we hired to do the publishing for us, I'm not going to give any names at this point, and then they'll come out later, sold us a bill of goods. Lied to us, promised things they couldn't deliver, or wouldn't deliver, I'm not sure which it was, end up publishing a book with errors included that we were, were intentionally sent as, um, um, which call it, editor notes, that's what it was. So we gave the book, with, there were some chapters in the book that had editor's notes in them, that for the editor to take out, they never did. They got published without them. So the quality of work was shoddy, and unfortunately it reflects on all of us, as, as, as the writers and authors, and particularly for the person who was the main author, my coach, friend of mine. And so, this whole thing has become painful. And this is the price of fraud in a way, because even though we're the ones that are now seeking 
well, restoration of the book, which I've actually taken over doing the editing for now and the, and the, and the proofing for, but also for the people who are involved. And if you want to read, if you want to read more about it, I posted it in, in my, on my walls. So if you want to read about it, you can do it there. I'm not going to do it on the video. Not this one, anyway. I'm not going to drop the names here. But the reality is, is that people's feelings were hurt and also our reputations are being somewhat tampered with because of what happened. So fraud in the sense of relationship, and I'll get to that back in a second, is in a similar vein because in business, when someone's being fraudulent, they can cause you business harm, branding harm, labeling you in certain ways because you trusted them. So they may actually do you more damage than you deserve that you're even allowed to have. No, no, sorry, I'm going in a part that doesn't make sense. Let me back up a second, excuse me. So this, this, this thing is, I can feel it. That, so let, okay, let me be transparent, even more so than I've been. This whole scenario has been really triggering me and it's pushing me off track. So my ability to be eloquent on this video has been a bit distracted. So let me, that's, that's what's going on partly. So I apologize for not being as clear as sharp as I usually am. But I want to speak to this in another way, which, and I want to speak about relationship. Okay, let me, let me, okay, this is getting better. One of the things that frustrates me most when I see clients and friends who are in relationships that, that suck is that they got suckered into that relationship by somebody. Somebody pulled them into a relationship, a person, their date, their, their, their person they met online, and they fell for them. And then days, weeks, months later, the truth comes out. You find out this person is a charlatan, a liar, a cheat, a fraudulent person. So... The questions I asked in the title, which I now need to go back and look at this, is, is how do you deal with that and what do you do about it? First, well, or how do you know about it? The first thing is you've got to really work on your own inner guidance system. I talked about this in another broadcast about being in, intuitive and plugged into who you are and tapping into your resources. And as much as intuition is labeled as a feminine or a woman's skill, it actually is for men and women. We both have that ability. So we can resource that place inside to be more resonant because I've noticed recently um, I was going to go to an event that some friends invited me to and I tapped into my internal radar and I just felt it doesn't line up and that intuition saved me from going there not, not saying it's bad, good or bad I just know I wasn't going to fit in that environment and so I said no I'm a guy and I can do that so any guy can do this as as any woman can it's tapping that place of knowing what resonates or what doesn't resonate that's one thing the second part is if it does happen to you Be gentle with yourself. Sometimes when we get um, screwed over by somebody, the temptation is to start judging yourself like we screwed up. Like, oh, how do I trust them? That the, you know, they did all that to me. I didn't believe. I didn't take care of myself. I got screwed over. Whatever that was, and we go start. We just start beating ourselves up. Something that wasn't our fault. So, second thing is, is be gentle with yourself. To actually give yourself a break because what happened happened. Life happens sometimes, and I know I'm dealing, with, dealing that with the book right now and I know I'm reminding my friend about this, that what happened, happened. It isn't the end of the world. It sucks in so many ways, but the reality is we're going to grow through this. Go through and grow through this. It's part of that journey of healing is even though we were the ones as victim, victims of this, we can still be gentle with ourselves and forgive ourselves and grow through that. Sorry, smacking the microphone. The third piece is to really use that as a lesson. Because as I said, I said intuition is great and also being grateful, gentle with yourself is great. But if you don't learn it, you don't heal from it, you don't transform your experience, you tend to go back and repeat it again. And that is no good thing. So, as I'm saying this now, I'm just also parallel thinking about this business arrangement, seeing if I can apply those to that too, so I already see places I can. So this is helping me if it's not helping you. So thank you for watching anyway. <laughs> I've talked about this one before about when you about staying true to yourself and living in integrity and being honest and fraud is another fl flavor of how that can work against that so for, to say this in a simple way you deserve to raise your standards to what you want in a relationship on all levels sorry 
just had an invasion of the black cat just walked in, started chatting away. I'm not sure you can hear on the microphone or not, but he's over there. Anyway, so being aligned to your true values, being aligned to who you are, to really own your power, your magnificence, and your strength is where you find, you find your standards get raised. For most of us, we sometimes get knocked off track by somebody we think is great, but they're not. And that, that I use the fraud, I'm using fraud locks in the title, but that facade, it's a better word in this sense, can sometimes be feel like that we didn't realize that they were putting it on. So we blame ourselves. And so being gentle with ourselves, as I said before, forgiving ourselves for the judgments we placed against ourselves, because we oftentimes self-recriminate or we, we feel guilty, that somehow we, it's our fault that we chose someone who was a charlatan or a fake or a fraud when it was their skill and manipulation that did it. So, yes, you may have issues with them, but I invite you to look at how you can be gentle with yourself and actually love yourself through this process because it is so tempting to have a higher standard that is where we need to step up to a high standard of um, discernment. So if we don't do it, we're violating something. And that's not healthy. So being, again, gentle with yourself, forgiving yourself, accepting yourself for what's been happening helps you to move through it in a very healthy way. Now, the challenge is once you're through it, is what to do next, which is to, again, as I mentioned earlier, really start working with your own intuition, your own inner sense of guidance, because we all have that, and start trusting that more. Start checking in, and then start becoming more aware when you make decisions again. So if you're out dating again, start to notice the differences. Because the thing is, we all have this, is we start to notice familiarity. So if you've been with somebody who's been a fraud to you, a charlatan, a, um, what was the word I used before? A fake? You can actually anchor in those, no, no wrong word, anchor, bad choice. <laughs> you can assign those experiences to a place where you know what it feels like. So when you're on dates again at a new relationship prospect and checking out other people, you can actually use that as a measuring stick, as it were, a gauge to feel into, does that person fit the same paradigm or not? So those lessons, can actually, those, those wounds can become lessons, and those challenges can become tools you can use in your gauging going forward. So if you're dating some out in the dating world, and you've maybe come across a couple of fakes that really screwed you up, be aware of that happened. And you're th out, when you go out again, look for those clues, feel into it. And actually, it's not, not even necessarily overt things you'll see, but you'll feel the discord. You'll feel the what we're looking for the disharmony because it is disharmony when you find somebody who's not in their truth you can feel it when you let yourself feel it and this is the thing what I'm talking about here is a, is a, is a um, deeper, higher I'm not sure which one it comes under way of relating to people and it takes practice so again as I mentioned earlier when you make mistakes or when you get crossed this way be gentle with yourself in the process of exploring and experiencing this, to, to when you're building up your intuition, when you're learning to check in and test that radar to know when you're aligned, when you're not off, off track, be okay if you make mistakes. Plane going over. I can hear it. I'm pretty near the microphone. <clears throat> so, practicing this is a like riding a bike. If you fall off, you get back on and you ride again. Remember that it's okay to make mistakes but also know that as you're doing this more and more, you make less mistakes. So the chance of coming across someone who's gonna be fraudulent, as I mentioned at the beginning, or someone who basically is a faker or just a liar, will be easier to discern and know early on so you can walk away more quickly. It takes practice. There's other stuff I want to say, but it doesn't fit. So just I'm watching my, just, just scanning through a catalog of things that are coming through right now. Um, yeah, I've got to do some stuff offline. This was coming up. Okay. <laughs> I guess in a way it's been a kind of a, a sub, a sub, sub vocal vent. <laughs> talking about things, not talking about it. Interesting. Um, I'm going to have a conversation with a friend of mine about this. All right. 
So I hope this has been of use to you because for me it was, it was useful for me just to get it out of my system because it's been bugging me for a few days and it came up today in a big way. So um, <laughs> I hope this one was beneficial because I was definitely feeling myself like banging against something inside as I was doing this one. So hopefully it was of value to you. Um, so I mentioned at the beginning, this is a daily broadcast on Facebook Live that goes out to YouTube and onto my podcast. Thank you, Gina, for letting me know. I appreciate that. I'm glad it was that useful to you. Or hopefully it was to you. Um, I need to keep practicing what I offer. I have a self-love practice that I recommend I put out every day on my Facebook Lives because I've been promoting it for the last couple of weeks. I need to practice it more myself because it can help me remember this. So I'm um, inviting you to check it out. If you go to my website, it's a self-love guided meditation. Sorry, self-love mirror meditation guide with a guided meditation practice two of them and in audio format as well as a written guide you can download you can download the whole thing if you go to barryselby.com forward slash self love or one word download that i'll put the link in the comments um this broadcast is my ongoing is one of my ongoing talks messages for the masculine to inspire the feminine heart inspire your feminine heart this will be on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, author, as well as on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And also on my podcast is slowly building up, which is also called Messages from the Masculine. You can subscribe there and also download my broadcast there. Um, interesting stuff going on. I, I'm not complete with this in myself, but I'm complete with the broadcast. So thank you for watching. Appreciate you being with me. I may come back tomorrow with a different level of this. We'll see. No promises. Um, but I appreciate you being with me in this <laughs> self-investigation I've been going through. Um, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves, and thank you for watching. And if you have questions, comments, thoughts, you can please put in the comments below, and I'll respond to them later on. And uh, thanks for being with me. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.